So in the last few lectures, we learned about data binding from component class to view template and from view template to component class. And this is called as one-way data binding because there we are only binding data in one direction, either from component class to view template or from view template to component class. So in one-way data binding, either we can bind data from component class to view template, we can achieve it using string interpolation and property binding, and we have already talked about that. Then we can also bind data from view template to component class using event binding. And we talked about event binding in our last lecture. Now we are going to talk about two-way data binding. In two-way data binding, we can bind data from component class to view template. And at the same time, the data will be binded from view template to component class. That means whenever we change a property in the component class, the changed value will reflect in the view. And in the view, whenever we change the value, that change value will be assigned to the property of the component class. Let's try to understand two-way data binding with an example and how we can achieve it. But before that, let me go ahead and let me remove everything from here. Or what I will do is I will simply comment all the HTML content from here. I'll simply keep it for your reference. And from this lecture, we are going to implement our actual e-commerce application. And the first thing which we are going to do is we are going to implement the search functionality. And for that, we need to implement a search text box. And for the search box, let's go ahead and let's create a new component. So I'll go ahead and I will open a new terminal. And in here, we want to create a new component inside this product list component. So first, we need to move to that product list component. For that, let's use cd command. So from the source folder, we want to go to app folder. And in the app folder, we have product list folder. Let's press enter. And now we are in the product list folder. Let me go ahead and let me clear the terminal first. And now let's type the ng generate command. And here we want to generate a new component. And I'm going to call this component search. Let's press enter. And now a search component should be created inside this product list component. So if I expand this product list component, there we have this search folder. In there we have our search component. Now from this component, again, I will go ahead and I will delete this spec.ts file. Okay, so here we have our search component class decorated with add component decorator. The selector there is app search. So I'll keep it like that. And the template URL here is search component.html. So let's go to that view template. And in here we have a paragraph element, but we don't need this paragraph element here. Instead, we want to write some HTML in order to display a text box and a button. For that, in order to save some time, I have already written some HTML. So I'll copy that HTML from here. Let's go back to VS code and let's paste it there. We don't need these two divs for now. So let's remove it. So in this HTML, we have this div inside that div. We have an input element and we also have a button element. Then we have another div and inside this div, we are simply displaying a paragraph. Okay. So this is a very simple HTML here. Now, to design this HTML, I have also written some CSS. So let's go ahead and let's grab that CSS. Let's grab that CSS from here. And let's go to VS Code. And let's go to the style sheet of the search component, which is this search component.css. And let's paste it there. And now let's go to search component.ts. And let's use this selector in our product list component. So here we have this product list component.html. In there, we have commented everything. So the first thing which we want there is the search text box. For that, we can use the selector of the search component. With this, if we go to the web page, it will look something like this. So here we have our input element and the button. And here we have our paragraph. Okay, now don't worry about this paragraph for now. I will explain you why we have this paragraph here. And now with the help of this text box, let's go ahead and let's learn about two-way data binding. Two-way data binding is basically a combination of property binding and event binding. So we have learned that using property binding, we can bind data from the component class to view template. And using event binding, we can bind data from view template to component class. So this two-way data binding is simply a combination of property binding and event binding. Let's see how we can achieve two-way data binding by combining property binding and event binding. So here, let me go ahead and let me close this product list component.html. Let's also close this product list component.ts. Then 
let's close this search component.css we don't need it anymore and we need to work with search component.html which is the view template and search component.ts there we have the search component class so here what we are going to do is we are going to create a property called search text it is going to be of type string and for now let's say search text is maybe men's via so here what we want is we have this search text and in the view we have this search text box this input element so we want to pre-populate this input element with the search text which we have assigned to this search text property in this case we want to pre-populate this input element with this value men's via for that we can use one-way data binding where we want to pass data from component class to view template and we have learned for that we can use property binding right so here in the search component.html on this input element we are going to bind the value property for that we need to wrap it within square brackets like this and to that we can assign any typescript expression within these double quotes here we simply want to assign this search text property to this value property and with this if we save the changes and if we go to the web page there you will notice that this text box is pre-populated with that value men's wear. and here also search result for there also we want to show that same value the search text value so currently we are hard coding it as you can see we are hard coding it here but instead of hard coding it let's go ahead and let's use our search text property okay if you save the changes again and if you go back to the web page now you can see that value has been rendered if i go ahead and if i change this value to something else maybe woman's watch and if you go back to the web page now that value should be rendered in the text box as well as here so whatever we are going to search using this search text box that should be displayed here and also in the text box so this is one way data binding where we are passing data we are binding data from the component class to view template now what we also want is whenever the user types something inside this search box for example man's shoe this value should be assigned back to this search text property okay and for that we have learned that we can use event binding so here when we will input something inside this text box an input event will happen we are going to bind that input event to this search text property so here let's go to search component.html and on this input element let's also bind input event okay and in order to bind an event we need to wrap it within parenthesis like this to this let's assign a function let's call it maybe update search text okay and in the last lecture we learned that whenever an event occurs it emits an event object and that event object is available inside the dollar event variable right so whenever this input event will happen on this input element it is going to emit an event object in this case it is going to emit input event object so that will be assigned to this dollar event variable and we are passing that event to this update search text method now here we have this error because we need to create this method so let's go ahead and let's create that method here okay and it is also going to take a parameter and here we also need to specify the type of this event the type of the event which is going to be emitted for now let's set it to any but in the last lecture we learned that whenever the input event happens it raises an event of type input event right so here we can also specify that type which is input event and in the last lecture we also saw that on this input event we will have a target property which basically stores the target on which the event has happened in this case the event will occur on this input element so this target property is going to store the dom object of that input element and on that we can access its value so this value it is going to store the value which the user has entered inside the text box inside the input element and now we want to assign that value to this search text property 
So here we can say this dot search text equals whatever value the user has entered inside this input element. Now here we have this error which says event dot target is possibly null. To fix this problem, for now let's simply set the type as any. Okay, we will talk about this error letter in this course, but for now here we want to understand two-way data binding. So for now let's simply set the type of this event to any, and in that case that error is gone. All right. So in this way we are binding the value which the user is typing in the text box to this search text. So whenever the value in the text box will change, that new value will be assigned to this search text here. So if I save the changes, if we go back to the web page, initial value is woman's watch. That's because that's what we have set the initial value for this search text. Now, when we start typing something inside this text box, let's say men's shoes, you see that value is being rendered here. That means that value is being assigned to the search text property and that is being rendered here. So in this way, by combining property binding and event binding, we can achieve two-way data binding. And that's why I said that two-way data binding is basically the combination of property binding and event binding. Now, we can achieve this two-way data binding in a more simpler way. So instead of using property binding and event binding like this, we have another way and that is by using a built-in directive called ng model. So again, when we use ng model that time also, since we have learned that two-way data binding is a combination of property binding and event binding, what we do in property binding? In property binding, we use a set of square brackets and in there we specify the property name. And in event binding, we use a set of parentheses and in there we specify the event name. So this is the syntax which we need to use. And inside this parenthesis, so first we have a set of square brackets. Inside that we have a set of parentheses. And in there we need to use a directive called ng model. Okay. And to this we can go ahead and we can assign the property which we want to bind. In this case, we want to bind search text property. Now here you will see that we have an error. And if I hover over this error, it says can't bind to ng model since it isn't a known property of input. Now to resolve this problem, all we have to do is let's first save the changes here. And all we have to do is we have to go to appmodule.ts file. There we need to import ng model. So for that we can say import ng model and we want to import it from angular slash forms. Okay, we need to import ng model from angular slash forms. And now we need to register it. Now, since it is a third party library, we are going to use this ng model. We are not creating it, right? It is a third party library. So since it is a third party library, we are not going to specify it inside this declarations array. We are going to specify it inside this imports array. So there, let's go ahead and let's register this ng model. And here we have an error. And if I hover over this error, it says the directive ng model appears in import, but it's not standalone and cannot be imported directly. That's because here, instead of importing ng model, we need to import form module. And again, we need to import form module from angular slash forms. And we need to register this forms module inside this imports. Okay. And with this, all the errors are gone. Okay, so in order to use this ng model, we need to import forms module from angular slash forms and then we need to register it in the imports array because it is a third party library we are using. So it should be registered within imports array when we are creating a component or a directive of our own that we declare inside the declarations array. Keep this point in mind. All right, with this, let's save the changes. Let's close this app module.ts. Let's go to search component.html. And here also the error is gone. And in this way, using this ng model, we can achieve two way data binding. So if we go to the web page, here you see initially the value stored in the search text is women's watch. So that has been rendered here. Now, as soon as I start typing something here, for example, iPhone, you will see that is being rendered here and also here. 
So whatever value we are typing here, that is getting assigned to the search text. And then that value is being rendered here. And this is what two-way data binding is. In two-way data binding, the binding happens in both the directions. The data is binded from component class to the view template and at the same time from the view template to the component class. Here, this search text property, it is binded with this input element. So whenever the value of the search text property will change, that will reflect in this input element. And whenever the value inside this input element will change, that will reflect in this search text property. This is what two-way data binding is. So this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.